Hi, my name is Aaron J. Marks. You can find out more about me at AaronJMarks.com. I'm a visionary purpose coach and a metaphysical leadership mentor. To my knowledge, I'm the only one in human history who's claimed either of those titles, and those that know me well tell me they couldn't imagine better ones for me. For as long as I can remember, I felt like my mind has worked just a little differently than most people's. At times it's been uncomfortable, but I've begun to see that it's actually incredibly important and that there's never been a better time to share the way that I think and see with the creative and entrepreneurial leaders out there who need to hear it. This is my podcast, A Higher Level. Everything we think, see, and do here happens on a higher level, and that makes all the difference. For some of you, these are among the most important and transformational conversations you will ever hear, and they will fill in something you may not have even known was missing but something that is essential for your happiness and transformation. This podcast is all about creating a space for these conversations, a place to explore your deepest and most persistent questions about the human condition, a place to dream, play, and muse about the meaning of it all, a place people tell me only I can help them access, and a place of crucial importance for the human spirit and our future as the human race. On a higher level, everything is vast, rich, beautiful, and deeply optimistic. Join me there now on a higher level. Hi, this is Aaron J. Marks. I'm a visionary purpose coach and metaphysical leadership mentor, and you can find out more about me at aaronjmarks.com. Welcome to another episode of A Higher Level. It's great to be with you again. So this episode is called The Paradox of What Do I Want and the Non-Existence of the Self. I'm going to start with a story. I, I was talking to a lady, um, a, a lady that I uh, I very much enjoyed spending time with, and she was she was very successful. And she was uh, she was kind of at a transition point in her career because uh, she was looking at the results she was getting and where she wanted to go. And while she was very happy with the progress she made and uh, the journey that had taken her to there and the and and the growth that that had demanded she was she was seeing where she wanted to go and realizing that she had to make some changes and um she she had been challenged to to think about how this might be done and one of the ways that she was challenged was that she was asked well what do you want and i i think um you know that's a question that i feel like more and more of us are able to ask these days um I, I just I, I feel like there's something about the current time that that is permitting that question for many of us in a way that uh, was not before, and there's a lot of reasons for that. I'm not going to get into all of them here. I get into that in in other places and in a lot of the other content that I create. But um, I just I feel like there's there it, that's like that's part of the characterization of this current time is that a lot of us are able to ask that, and so we are we are grappling with that question and finding that it, it's actually very challenging on, on a number of levels. And uh, that, that's why I call it the paradox of what do I want? Like it's, it's actually not that easy to answer. So, uh, you know, this lady's story, um, you know, was, was case, case in point for that. Um, and, you know, it's like, she, she had never really a had the opportunity to think about it, B, the inclination to think about it or see the space to think about it or D the, you know, the directive to think about it. She, you know, she had had someone who was coaching her um, put that question to her and she, she had not considered it before. So um, it was new to her. It was strange to her. It was foreign to her. And so she, you know, she, she began to consider the answer to that. And, uh, and I think, I think the answer that she came up with is very interesting and it, you know, it demonstrates something I've observed and something I've struggled with as well, which is why I call it a paradox. So the first thing that she saw was, um, was that her morning routine was too rigid. You know, it felt like she was checking off boxes. And so she would get up and she would do certain things and felt like she was just sort of being held to a, you know, a, a strictness and a rigidity that, that was not, I don't know, serving her would be a, a way to say it or like that she didn't like, you know? And so, you know, th that, you know, that, that caused her to have a vision of something that would be more appealing to her, you know, which had a little bit more freedom, a little more flexibility, a little more kind of space built into it. And so, um, you know, instead of, uh, waking up and checking off the boxes, which for her was, uh, uh you know, within a, a non-denominational Christian framework. So she would, um, you know, do devotions and do certain Bible study. Um, instead, you know, she got up, she was able to take a walk and uh, meditate and spend time in nature. And, uh, you know, uh, 
automatically, as you might imagine, that started to shift her vision a little bit, you know, started to to shift what she thought was possible and, you know, sort of the feeling of her life. So, well, then what, what does she want after that? Well, uh, you know, she thinks about the house that she wants and, you know, I think a lot of us do. Um, and, you know, when we start getting into this, this space of personal development and asking what we want. Okay. So I, I want a house. So oh, I, I don't want to just, just want a house. I want a house on the water. I want a house on, on the, on the lake. Okay. And then that elevates to, okay, well, if I can really have what I want, then why stop at a lake? Let's, let's do the ocean. And then, you know, then it shifted in a way that, you know, that was fascinating to me because she said, well, you know, now it's like, oh, it could be a retreat center, right? Like, it's not just me, like people on my team or, you know, people on other teams could come and they could have retreats here, rejuvenating retreats, um, you know, where they, they spend time together, you know, um, uh, refreshing and getting in touch with their vision, <laughs> you know, um, so boom, it's not just her about her anymore. It's about others, you know, it's like you see how imperceptibly that happens um, where it's like, oh, I, I think that the, the incident I'm trying to, to show you here is like, we're actually not content to stay with ourselves, you know? So what I've realized is there, there is no self, you know, when you're asking what you want, you know, you, it doesn't, doesn't actually make sense to ask what you want um, because there is no self. Let me, let me, let me tell you the one other element of, of her vision, you know, for what she wanted, you know, she said, well, I, I want a speaking career. You know, I want to, I want to go on stages. I want to, um, you know, deliver message. I want, you know, to have this impressive and inspiring presentation and, uh, you know, help other people have inspiration and, uh, and vision, you know? And so boom, you know, you're, you're not in really yourself anymore. I mean, you're 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 the center of it, certainly, but that's that's a new business, you know, and, and a business always has to serve people, you know. So, you know, I, I think this is what I'm trying to get at. It's like when we ask what we want, it's always about some kind of service, some kind of interfacing with other people. And so I think it's I think it's funny. Um, you know, it's one of these funny paradoxes um of life where it's like when we think about what we want, it never stays with us. It can't, it's impossible to stay with us because, um, you know, there's something self-defeating is the term that comes to mind, which is sort of funny. Um, you know, it's uh, self-defeating and uh, even non-existent about what you want, right? Do you notice this? Um, you know, immediately when you think about what you want, you think about how it interfaces with other people on, on a number of levels. And, that's why I say it's it's never about the self. I mean, it it sort of starts there, but it's like when you're you know when your vision really starts to expand, even prompted by that question of what do you want, it starts moving into these other levels beyond you. And humans are social spe social species. We've always been. I think we always will be. I can't imagine what the human race would be if we weren't a social species. And so, boom, we have to think in these different. I call them spheres. So. Um, you know, we go from the paradox of what do I want to the, I call them the five spheres of leadership influence, because I think that if you're to be happy, if you're to have a healthy vision, if you're to, um, you know, if you're, if you're to find joy and motivation and inspiration in that vision, I, I think it has to touch these five levels. So I'm going to go through what those are. And I, uh, one of the things that I help the leaders that I coach do is to get clarity on these levels. And it, you know, it doesn't necessarily happen all at once. And uh, it doesn't necessarily happen with equal strength on all of them. But I, but I really, you know, the more I talk to people, the more I get into leaders' heads and, uh, you know, get into those, those frustrations and those aspirations. Um, you know, the two rations that I talk about either on a previous or a subsequent episode, I, I find that they do have aspirations and frustrations on all these levels. And so it is important to acknowledge them and to, you know, take a comprehensive view of all of these as you discern your vision. So let, let's talk about the levels. Okay. So um, the first level is the self, because it does have to start with what you want, but you're going to find it never stays there. Um, and, you know, maybe you have thoughts of a car or a house or, you know, travel that you want to do, but, um, but I'm going to say that that's always going to be affected by the next level, you know, rather immediately, because, you know, when you think about a car or a house or travel, um, you know, are the restaurants you want to eat in, you're not doing that alone, right? Like you don't drive in your car alone. You don't travel alone. I mean, maybe some people want to be solo world travelers, but not the people that I tend to attract, the people that I tend to attract, 
um, you know, they, they have families and communities and they, you know, they, they, they want to be very much oriented around those things as well. So even when you talk about, you know, the car that you want, like you have to think about other people in that process. And so that's what I say. That's why I say there is no self here. There's no self. There's only how you want to interface with these other, other spheres. So number one is the self. And when you start to have an image of what you want, it's going to involve other people. And so that's what the other, the other spheres are. The second sphere is your family. So what do you want for and with your family? You know, what, what does that look like in your life? When, when you, when you see that ideal, you know, that, that ideal platonic image of, of how you want to interact with your family, um, what do you see? No, that's where it goes next. Um, because you have aspirations and frustrations about your family and, you know, some of these can never be solved, but I, you know, it's to have the vision. That's, that's where you have to start. So the second one is family. The third one is your, your team and people have different teams, right? You know, so it's like, for some people, this is their workplace, you know, uh, for some people, it's the department they lead. Uh, for some people, it's the business they're building. For some people, it's the business they want to start. For some people, it's a volunteer organization that they are involved with or a service organization, you know, like Lions or Rotary. Um, for for some people, it's a governmental organization, you know, for some people, it's a nonprofit, right? So you have all these teams that you're a part of, uh, you know, for some people, it's a religious community, you know, we're all on many, many teams. And, uh, you know, these are all company cultures of different kinds. So that's the third level. It's, um, you know, your team level, what what aspirations and frust uh, for and frustrations with do you have uh, for your team? Uh, the fourth is community. And, and you see these intersect, right? Like, it's very, very hard to think of any of these in isolation, because they, f you know, they integrate and they 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 flow through and they touch one another and you know ultimately existence is, is inseparable history is inseparable you're living now but you're wrapped up with history you're you're wrapped up with the future you know it's all the same story unfolding uh interacting integrating you know crossing over um uh, you know interacting with itself you know you can't get away from that but you know the, i i found this is a useful framework to kind of tease things out though and start um you know, taking action. So your community, um, and you know, we have communities on a number of levels. You can think of this as like jurisdictions, right? So you have a community that's a city or a village or a town, right? So what, what frustrations or aspirations do you have for that? Um, you have, uh, you know, a state or a province, uh, yeah, you know, some kind of territories into which your nation is divided up. That's another thing that you might have a vision for, uh, your nation, uh, you know, anyone who goes to do their civic duty of, uh, of voting or campaigning has some kind of a vision for their, um, you know, their governmental jurisdictions. So why do you have the allegiances that you do? Why do you have the political philosophies and ideologies that you do? Like ultimately, what is it, what does it work toward? You know, what is the vision um, you know, maybe you would even call this a utopian vision that you that you have that you want to work toward. You know, people have aspirations and frustrations in in that um, in that sphere very, very much, and I think it's very important that you acknowledge it and and work toward uh, change there. Um, and then finally, the global level, or you know, um, as I, as I as I record this early November twenty twenty two, it's the global level. You know, within a decade, maybe it'll be. The solar level, you know, it, it's it's the level of the human family, you know, um, because I think now more than ever we we see ourselves as members of of a human family. None of us has to be here. We're all in this together. Uh, we all need to love each other as well as we can. Love is a hard word. I was talking to my wife about this this morning. Um, love is very very hard to define, um, you know, and in in a lot of ways it, it's practically meaningless. You know, if you really ask what, what what does love mean but i i think that it does point to a higher reality that we humans are all in this together and we do have a sense of what it means to to be better together i think most of us do so what is your vision for for humankind how is the human race how is the spirit of the human race best honored ignited channeled what does that look like? Again, this is likely some kind of utopian vision, but I, I think we all have our utopian visions. And I'm going to say that I think it's something that you should think about and discern and reflect on and take action steps toward. Because I really wonder, I wonder how many people have some sort of a, 
a global or a you know a human race vision that they're they're just not acting on because for some reason they don't have permission or they don't think they're up to it i you know i think i think uh anyone who acts on that level yeah you know no one gave them permission to do it it's you know it's just the the tendency and the influence that they have so you can do it too you can start working in that direction too if you have a vision it means it's something that you're being called to and you can start moving toward it. So so anyway, those are the those are the five spheres of leadership influence. And again, it's the paradox of what do I want because asking what do I want reveals that there is no self. It's these four other spheres in which you constantly live and move and have your being and influence and for which you have aspirations, you know, things that you want, but don't have and frustrations, things that you have, but don't want. And those both show you the ideal that you see in your imagination and can start moving toward that you will never reach, but that is what you're here to do, I think. So I, I hope that has you seeing and um, thinking and acting on on a higher level, which is what everything here is, is about. Um, but that's that's how I think about it. You know, when you ask, what do you want? You know, just as that lady did, it didn't stop with her, right? Um, you know, quickly move to what you do for other people, what, what, what kind of relationships you want with other people, because that's what life is. That's what the human race is. It's a series of relationships, you know, a series of tightly networked, interlocking relationships, 100% of it. We all rely on each other. We all serve each other. So when you ask, what do I want? You know, immediately you you know, it's inevitable that you start actually acting on and thinking on that level because uh, there is no self. <laughs> so that's, that's what I mean by that. And uh, you know, that delightful chat that I had with that, with that lovely lady, um, you know, showed me that. Um, and I think it's a wonderful thing, you know, because um, humans don't exist in isolation. You know, we we're here for each other. So what is your vision uh, for those, for those five spheres of leadership influence? And I'd love to hear uh, I'd love to hear what what that um, what that helps you see and helps you discern. So, thanks for joining me on this uh, episode of a higher level. Um, I, I really enjoyed really enjoyed recording that one. I hope um, yeah I really hope that that made an impact on your on your thinking and actions. So, my name is Aaron J. Marks. You can learn more about me at AaronJMarks.com. I'm a visionary purpose coach and metaphysical leadership mentor. This has been. Um, an episode that I call There Is No Self um, and the Paradox of Asking What Do I Want and the Five Spheres of Leadership Influence. I'll see you in the next episode of A Higher Level. Thanks so much for listening to A Higher Level. I hope that got you seeing, thinking, and acting just a little differently, or maybe even a lot. When you act differently, you get different results but we need to start with the vision and the thinking. How do you feel? Ready to go and make positive, inspiring changes in your life and work? If so, it means what we're doing here is working. And I would love for you to let me know if this is you. There's a bunch of ways for you to get in touch with me. You can go to my website, AaronJMarks.com, or look for Aaron J. Marks, Visionary Purpose Coach and Metaphysical Leadership Mentor on Facebook, or you can look for Aaron J. Marks on LinkedIn or Instagram, whatever is easiest for you. And if this is speaking to you, I might suggest that you think about becoming one of my leadership coaching clients. In our work together, we'll have conversations on this level, but tailored just to your life and aspirations. You really can't imagine what a difference this can make for your mindset, vision, and results. The first step after learning more about my approach is to book a free, no obligation discovery call, both of which you can do at AaronJMarks.com. If your intuition is nudging you, don't wait any longer. It is likely the next step along the marvelous journey of wherever you are here to go and whatever it is you are here to do. And I can't wait to meet you. Thanks again for listening, everyone. I'll see you on the next episode when we'll continue to see, think, and act on a higher level. I'll see you then. A Higher Level is the official podcast of Aaron J. Marks, visionary purpose coach and metaphysical leadership mentor. Learn more at www.aaronjmarks.com. A Higher Level is written, recorded, edited, and produced by Aaron J. Marks.
Music is by Aurier. I'll see you next time on a higher level.